insurance analytics and what kind of uh, major problems that uh, insurance analytics firms have. So first of the fundamental question that we have is how do we identify the potential insurance buyers? Now, because of huge competition and various different types of uh, insurance that come into the market, like general, the term, and even within them, they have got so many different types of insurance, it's quite difficult for identifying the right potential customer or a lead. So we, not call, we don't call it customers, but we call them leads. So leads are those sort of people who might potentially get converted into customers or who are the potential customers in future. Second type of question is, can we improve operations within the insurance firms right, to reduce risk of customer journey? Now, there are a lot of cases where it takes huge amount of time for various activities that happens at the underwriting stage. So let's say I'm the customer X and I'm trying to buy a policy from uh, insurance company Y. So when Y gives me a documentation or a form to fill or there's an agent who comes to my home and then fills up all the documents and consider that I'm taking a term insurance, there are a lot of activities that take place. They, the insurance company tries and finds out would I be a fraud or is there any issue with my documentation. Second thing is they will send me for a medical examination. right? And the medical examination might like, take a lot of time. So what happens is when you, when, when let's say for example, there is a insurance company which is having a monopoly in this in a particular region in such cases it is very easy task for them because even if they take like 45 days 50 days for me to get the policy that's fine but it's not the case in india it's not the case abroad so most of the insurance analytics firms are now catering to these two different problems first problem is how do you identify the right set of leads Second is how to improve your operations so that the customers don't leave and go. As I said, example, that if it's taking 45 to 50 minutes for an insurance policy to come online and get an acceptance, a lot of customers might shift to some other companies which take less amount of time. So the objective here is to improve the operations. So there are more use cases in insurance analytics, but today I'm going to focus on the first one. Right, and this session basically is for all of those people who want to get into analytics and want to understand how do we fundamentally solve a problem. It's not always that you just implement, you get the data, you implement algorithms, you do data processing, feature engineering, you get the final outcome. It's not only that. Most of the part of solving a problem is more towards understanding the business, asking the right questions to the customer and then going with the flow of data science. So the next slide that I'm going to showcase is an end-to-end -end understanding of a data science problem, okay, in, uh, so it's not specifically for insurance and it is, is a general case for all the different corporates. Okay, so as the slide suggests, this is more related to the fundamental flow of a data science project. Now let's understand it very clearly. Point number one, research and business logic. Whenever a client comes to you or maybe you go to the client with a plethora of problems that you have solved or client comes to you and says, hey, I have this problem. It might not be the real problem behind it. I mean, they obviously will tell with, explain with respect to the business they are focusing. But you need to basically deep dive and try and understand how do we solve this particular problem. But before that, is it the right problem? Is it is the problem that the client is saying a real within quotes problem, right? So for that, you need to first understand their business. Now let's say for example, insurance analytics. What is the business of uh, insurance company, right? Uh, fundamentally, they they have they might have different set of products, okay, different types of services that they give. Right? It can be general insurance, it can be life insurance, then they will term insurance, general will have motor insurance, medical facilities, all those for medical insurance and all. 
Now, if you don't understand the business, it is difficult for you to suggest them the right set of recommendations because data science is not only uh, going ahead implementing algorithms and getting the right uh, output and showcasing the client. It's more about helping the end client to develop a very good business and prosper in the business basis your logic and understanding and problem solving skills. That's the main fundamental of a data science problem, right? So first let's see the point that is most important, understand the business. And within that we have about three different things. First, you have to research about a client. So you might be having 10 years experience, two years, one year, 15 years, or 25 years. Until unless you do a client investigation kind of a thing or research about the client and find out the entire foot map of that particular client for let's say one domain. I'm not saying all. For example, if you're talking about uh, there, there are so many companies which do multiple different domains kind of thing, right? Uh, so let's let's say for example, company like freelance, right? They have thousands of things that they do, right? We don't have to learn everything, but whatever problem you're trying to solve, whichever domain, maybe healthcare, maybe retail, maybe tourism, maybe academic, anything, try to understand the specific domain well, without which you cannot solve the problem. Second is ask the right questions. If you are not very clear with the problem statement, don't worry, that's going to happen. But you have to ask the right questions to the client. If you do not ask the right questions to the client, client cannot give you the right set of data that you would require for doing the analysis. Right? That's very much important. Once you ask the right questions and the client is happy with what you have given, uh, ask the question. And these set of right questions will basically help you to create a rapport with your client because client is always interested in people who ask questions and they are also intelligent questions right so next is once you fix that okay this is what is needed the 50 percent of your battle is won so okay so what you have to do next is finalize the problem statement yes this is the problem statement a one-liner that tells you finally this is what my client wants Get it obviously, uh, you know, uh, get it a proper approval from the client saying, yes, this is a problem statement, and then you can go ahead. Now, there's one more fundamental thing in this. You obviously have to understand your data. To understand the data, as you have asked the right questions, your end counterpart or the external counterpart will go ahead and provide you the right set of data that you require basis all your questions that you have given. So let's move on to the second one. Identify and get the data needed. This is very much important. Now, once you get the data and you're okay with it, try and understand each and every data point. Every client will have their own nomenclature their own column names and stuff. So you have to go back to the client and ask, ask for the description of each and every column, right? You identify the data properly, finalize the data set, and then you move ahead, right? This is also very important because until unless you finalize with the client and define the right scope and say that, okay, if you give me these 100 variables, then yes, I can give you 15 different questions and answer to those 15 different questions. 15 different questions, right? Going forward, next thing is understand and enrich the data. So explore the data, go to each column, try and understand how many blank values are there, what are the different values, is the date format right, clean the data properly and bring it to a normal level where you can use it for detailed analysis, predictive modeling, and all sorts, right? Next, and we have still not reached the modeling part. Next is define the KPIs. Now, what, there are two things. You either define the KPIs at the start of the business or at the point in which you are starting modeling. The reason I tell you why. If you define the KPIs at understanding the business without seeing the data, that is also good, but the thing is, your scope will be exhaustive. 
right? That is also good practice. I'm not saying that it's not, but you can have both the cases. You create some rock APIs uh, before you start with the project work, and then once you clean, bring the data in a common format, then you sort and list down all those APIs that directly impact the end clients. Uh, whatever uh, outcome that the client wants, it might be awareness, it might be sales, it might be revenue, it might be uh, incrementing profit margin, it can be anything. Right? So, so define the right set of KPIs and then try and find out because if a different set of KPIs and different set of analysis, now there might be some KPIs that are very post factor, there might be KPIs which obviously would be post facto, but you need some predictions for the future or forecast for the future, right? And basis all of this, select the right set of algorithms. It's not that uh, your problem might be classification plus train the regression association, but there might be certain set of objectives or projects where you would require two to three different categories of algorithms. Like for example, for a particular company, you're trying to find out affinity between two different products. You obviously require association there. And then we are trying to find out for insurance and in this case, you're trying to find out for, you're trying to find out who would be the best, uh, what is the probability that a person X or person Y or person Z might be an end customer. What is the probability of that, right? So define the right KPIs and the right set of algorithms. Now, most of the people who work in data science have seen that they implement 10 or 12 different algorithms and say that this algorithm is first place is the accuracy. Please don't do that. Because the reason why each and every algorithm is made fundamentally might be seen. Like say, for example, classification algorithms will be random for addition, trace, support, automation, and all those. But internally, their working is totally different from one another, right? There might be obviously some sub subset kind of uh, algorithm, there might be superset kind of algorithm, that's fine. But there is a different pitch difference between each and every algorithm. Like say for example, if your data is highly skewed, you have 99% zeros and 1% ones, or uh, that means your data is totally skewed or your class is totally skewed. Mostly those algorithms that are more model flexible than interpretable like the support with machine or uh, random forest instead of general ensemble algorithms work good. Whereas in those cases where interpretability is important, logistic education works should work well, right? I'm not saying 100%, but there are certain reasons for which each and every algorithm have been implemented. Going forward, once you implement the algorithm, bring everything at the table, Showcasing the end result is very important because the client has come to you because they think that you are a good data scientist or you are a good machine learning engineer or a good firm which can solve multiple problems. So showcasing the end results to the client should be very presentable, right set of visualization and easy to grasp. It should be well consumable by the client. This is fundamentally the flow of a data science project. Going forward, in the next slide, I will try and explain what is a problem definition card. Most of us fail in this point because every computation that I see online starts with the data. Never start with the data. Try and visualize what data you want. I'll tell you why. Because let's say your end stakeholder is CX of some form. When you tell that you want the data, he's, going, he's not going to download it by himself or herself. Or she is not going to download it by herself. What they are going to do is tell a senior manager or a manager to pull the data. Now data is in silos in different, different locations. Now, whatever they feel is important, they will just extract and give it to you. But they might miss certain data basis the understanding of, uh, I'm not saying the business, but the basis the understanding of how a data science model works, what kind of variables cause causality, right, all of those. So always start with creating set of questions that are very important to the client, basis which you can basically go ahead and say, hey, I want this data. If they do not have this data, that's fine, but the client will have an understanding that, okay, if I start capturing the data in the near future, 
then yes, I can do something about it. Going forward, uh, we'll discuss about what is a program definition card, but I would like to end uh, the session one here because I'll be taking the problem definition card later on. But any questions on this, please do uh, drop an email or post, or post it on my LinkedIn profile and uh, I'll be answering to all of your questions. Thank you very much.